Hi, I'm Katie Skilton and today I'm going to be sharing with you um, Simply Cards and Papercraft issue 248. So I'm going to be sharing a make with you, showing you the gift and just kind of going through it all and showing you what you can do with it. Now this is a beautiful gift that you get with it, but in the magazine you've got so much inspiration. So you've got lots of inspiration on how to use the gift. So if you get it and you love, you know, you look at it and you think, oh, I'm not sure what to do with it. There's, it's jam-packed in here with inspiration, with beautiful projects. But it's also got lots of other projects and products and hints and tips. So, good one to get. Now, the um, cover mount that comes with this is this Watercolor Wonders stamp set. So you get this beautiful large stamp set. It's got lovely, really strong focal points on it. Make it really easy. If you're new to watercolor, this is a really good one. Um, because you've got all those strong images that aren't too fiddly to color. It also comes with this Colorado Craft. Um, sentiments, the savvy sentiments, and it's Christmas sentiments, which I love nice sentiments with lovely fonts. These are perfect. I'm going to, I know I'll use these loads. But today I'm going to be using just the watercolor wonders, and I'm going to show you how to create this card. And it's got this hidden die cut um, sentiment in it. I'm hoping that you can see it there. It's got that joy written in it. So I'm going to stamp all the images and then show you how to create this card. So let's get started. So to start to make this card, we're going to need a mask for um, this stamp here, this poncetta stamp. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stamp it onto a um, sticky note and then cut around it. And that's going to be my mask. And I only need to do it once and I only need to do it with this one um, just purely because I'm going to cut two of these flowers and then I can use this for both of them. By just moving it so don't worry about being too precise with this because it's literally going to be stamped all over in a second so once you've stamped it from your sticky pad you need to trim around it and you need to trim around it so that this is going to create a mask for your um the rest of your stamping so you need to stick as closely as you can to those lines now these stamps are perfect for trying this if you've not done it before because they're lovely thick black lines which makes it really easy to cut around Okay, so once you've um, cut around your poncettia, you need to take the poncettia again, and you're, now you, this is going to be your panel for your card. So obviously, depending on what size you want it, I've done it so it's quite a big size. I will pop the measurements into the description. I can't remember off the top of my head what I've cut this down to, but I'll pop it in there anyway. Um, you need to stamp one slightly to the side because you want two to fit on here. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to use this one as a mask. So this is now going to cover um, this bit here. So just need to work out what angle it goes on. So it goes like that. And that's going to cover my whole stamped image. And now I'm going to pop this one down again now. And I'm going to stamp that flower again. But obviously where that mask is sitting, it's not going to stamp which means that I've got two flowers and one looks like they're poking out um, from behind the other. And this is how I'm going to build up this scene um, to eventually colour it in and then die cut it all out again. Okay. Pop some more ink down on that one. And then I'm going to use some of the leaves to start building up the scene. So I've got the stamp set here. And I'm just going to have a look and see how I want to build it up. So I'm going to take, I think I'll start with this one. So I'm going to keep to this side first of all to save me having to keep moving the post-it note. And I'm going to pop that one down there. And I'm going to do the same. And this is going to make the leaves look like they're popping out from behind that um, poncettia. So they're lovely big images, these. So... Um, really good if you're new to colouring and stamping and water colouring. A really good way to do this because they're very easy to colour in. So I'm going to keep going with this. And then we will see the finished image in a moment.
So now all the images have been coloured, you can see I'm just going to peel that one off and now you've got this image. So this is what we're now going to work with to colour. So I'm going to just move all of this out of the way a second, pop this one off and I'm going to bring in some of my inks. I forgot to mention earlier actually you also get the water brush um, with this cover mount as well. So that's really handy if you are new to watercolour, but you can never have too many of them because I literally put them down all the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the festive berries and um, the distressing, and I'm just going to um, <clears throat> start to paint on Setia. So just using the watercolour brush, I've sprayed a little bit of water on my mat and um, on top of the ink. I'm just going to start. Now, the beauty of watercolouring is you haven't kind of really got to be too precise with it. And you can just go for it and enjoy yourself. So I will show you um, which inks I'm using for which. And then I will get on and colour this whole image in. So it's ready for our die cut sentiment to be added in. So let me just show you those. So I have used the festive berries, shabby shutters, the wilted honey, pine needles, mowed lawn, <coughs> bundled sage, and the ripe crimson. Um, I'm just going to go on and colour this, and then I will be back to show you the next step. Now, once I've coloured <clears throat> all the images, I just want to add some splats. I'm just taking a scrap piece of card here, and I've just got a Posca pen. I'm covering the <clears throat> the actual stamped image it because I don't want particularly. I don't mind a little bit on the leaves, but I don't want it all over. And I'm just popping some ink onto the edges just to give it that kind of really rusticy look. I'm going to do it on that edge as well. So I just need, pop that off, just need to allow for that to dry before we die cut. So once your image has dried, you can bring in the big shot, or the, you know, your die cut machine. I'm bringing in the big shot. And I'm going to place the words. Now I'm using my magnetic platform on this so that the letters stay in place. I'm going to place these centrally onto this panel. It does help to have either magnetic or. Um, tape them down but just make sure if you tape them down it's really soft tape that's not going to peel away um your image once you've colored it all in and we'll line that up and then run this through the machine i'm actually die cutting this out of that center part now so i'm going to take away the letters but you want to make sure you keep all the letters so you're now left with this i'm going to pop the letters out now we need those they are going to go back in in a second pop those to the side and then bring in a piece of black card just slightly larger than the white panel and you want to stick that flat so just using wet glue pop that panel onto your back card. You don't have to use black, but I've decided to use black just to make it pop a little bit. Um, but you can use it as your mat and layer, but also as the base to where your letters are going to stick in a minute. So just pop that down. 
and then I'm going to take some 3D foam pads. So I've got some quite small ones here, depending on the letters you're using. So the letters I've used, these are the Card Making Magic lowercase alphabet. I use these so much. They're perfect for cards. They're just the perfect size um, for card making. So now I'm just going to grab some of my foam pads and I'm going to pop them onto the thickest part of the letter. So I'm going to get as many on there as possible so that the letter doesn't tend to sag once um, it's been handled a few times. Pop those wherever you can on that thick part of that letter. The, the beauty of these, um, of every part of it does have quite a thick um, piece that you can add quite a few foam pads to. So I have cut a couple of foam pads actually in half here. So I'm just going to use those on that thinner part of that Y just to keep it in place. That's quite a long um section to have no foam pads. Just grab my scissors here. Pop that one on. Lovely. Couple more. Just onto that big section. So then basically I'm going to bring in this back in and I'm going to pop the backs off of these. I'm going to stick these back into the gap. And it's just going to give you um, that 3D effect. Just make sure they're nice and lined up. Stick it back in. That's really good because some of the letters, like the O and things, you'll have the little um, circle in the centre that shines through. So you'll see the backing card behind it. Ideally, I should have waited for this to dry a little bit more, to be honest. So finally, pop the Y on. It's really fiddly because I'm using the tiniest parts of foam here to um, stick them on. There we go. So now you've got your 3D. And then what I've done, and I'll just bring in this one, what I've done, I've used some of the Tim Holt stickers here, and I've just popped on the Remember just to add kind of a proper sentiment to it. So obviously you can add any words to these as well. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you want to see more content. Um, but here's the card we made today. So you can see you've got that lovely 3D element. Now, obviously, you could do this with any stamp sets you want. So you could create birthdays with this. Hello. Um, just once you know how to do it, it's just a lot of possibilities are endless. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.